Good morning, painters. We are live. I'm here. Are you here? I see that Irene's here. Welcome, Irene. Good morning to you. This is the Planner Live Show, and uh, we're here the first first Friday of every month now. I'm Terry, and we're here to get Plain Air painters inspired, educated, motivated, working on our skills. We're in the studio here in Colorado. And, uh, you know, it's kind of weird because if you look at the last 10, 15 shows we did, we were out on the patio in Colorado, but it's it's covered with snow right now and ice. So we got to be in here and I'm just kind of squeezing my head in here because I want to keep the camera right where it is because I think you can see the painting, you can see my palette and you can see this lovely sunflower right here. If you're joining us on replay, welcome. Uh, this is Learning Plain Air channel. We're all about improving our, our skills. This channel is all about tutorials and demos for plain air painting. If you're not a plain air painter, hey, that's cool. You can, you can still join us and sit with the cool kids on the bus. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, we welcome all painters, but uh, specifically, we're trying to improve our skills for plain air painting. Um, again, if you're watching on, on replay, welcome. Feel free to skip around the channel and find some long form video tutorials. Hey, if you're in the chat, say a quick hello. Let me know you're there. And uh, happy new year. Happy new year. This could be a great, great year. I'm really pumped up. I'm excited for you. If you're just starting plein air painting or if you're committed to taking it to the next level, because uh, that's what I'm trying to do this year. So uh, so anyway, welcome. And uh, we're going to have a live Q&A at the end. It's about a 30 minute show. We'll keep it short and sweet. Um, and uh, what else here? Let's see. We have let's let's show let's show our finished painting. We usually show a, a finished painting from the prior week, you know, or the prior prior show. We were doing speed drills. I want to encourage you to keep doing these these kinds of speed drills. Okay, so I've got a I've got like a 16 by 20 taped off, and um, and basically I just do it in the six to, six by eight inch compartments, and uh, just you know when I have 15 20 minutes of spare time, and I want to kind of just work on loose brush strokes and be more painterly, and just really focus on big shapes. This is what I do, and this mountain is is across the street from my house here, so so that's kind of what I work on. I've got two spaces left here, so I got to get going. I've been kind of slowing down, but it's fun to kind of it's fun to kind of do that. I challenge you, I encourage you to do that yourself because it's great practice. Um, it is great practice for your plein air painting and your skills, and it can really help you make it make you a better painter. So that's what we were doing there. Hey, today we're talking about impasto technique. All right, impasto technique. I'm excited. And it's basically thick painting. If you have no interest in that, stay tuned, you know, because it doesn't matter if you're an abstract artist, if you're a, a realist or an impressionist, it doesn't matter what your style is. Really, all of those artists use impasto technique, um, you know, some heavy handedly and some sp uh, sparingly. But either way, I think it's something that uh, can really help you in your paintings, your plein air paintings. So let's go ahead and talk about that. I've got a, uh, I've got a quote of the day. And a quote of the day is, sometimes the subject calls for less paint. Sometimes the material, the nature of the subjects themselves demands impasto. The material, the nature of the subjects themselves demands impasto. Well, that's an interesting bold statement. And by Vincent Van Gogh himself, one of the pioneers of impasto technique. If you look at uh, Starry Night and gosh, his Hayfield paintings and just really kind of revolutionized and started using thick paint to make a statement. So uh, that's our quote of the day. But uh, we're going to paint this sunflower here. That's what we're going to do any minute now. I'm going to get started. And uh, we're going to try to talk about and practice impasto technique. So again, if you're in the chat, say a quick hello. Glad to have you here. Welcome. And uh, if you're watching on replay, welcome to you as well. And uh, this live stream is brought to you by the somewhat fairly new Facebook group we have called the Learning Plain Air Group. So if you're a Facebooker and uh, you're looking for kind of a more small, intimate group, uh, head on over to uh, Learning Planner Group and we'll approve you and would love to have you. It's, it's fun to, there's people in there from Canada, Australia, just kind of all over the globe. And it's, it's kind of fun to get to know people. It's a smaller group and I kind of like it like that right now. So we'd love to have you. But uh, hey, let's talk about impasto technique. And really, let's just kind of say this before I kind of squeeze myself out of the frame and get into painting. But it's basically you know, mark making on your canvas um, with paint using a brush or a palette knife such that it leaves an imprint or a texture that's very, very noticeable and very thick, you know, and uh, it's kind of like, it's kind of like buttering your toast, you know what I mean? Some people like to skid the butter across and, uh, and let it melt and other people like to uh, put it on a little thicker, if you will. So it's personal preference, but we're going to talk why you want to do it. We're going to talk what it can do for your paintings. 
and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, I, I'll say this, that some, some famous artists who use this technique were Rembrandt and, of course, the other French Impressionists like Monet and, of course, Vincent van Gogh, uh, Nikolai Fetchin, Russian Impressionist Nikolai Fetchin. Uh, gosh, who else? Edgar Payne. I think there's just there's tons and tons, you know, and, and so I think it's an effective technique that we can kind of remind ourselves and, and apply to our paintings here. So let's go ahead and, and do this. But hey, let me just tell you, like, why would you want to do this? First of all, you know, basically, I think in, in, in the short in the short version, as I get painting here, it it makes a bold statement. It's fun. It adds, it, it says to the viewer that you're confident about your brush strokes or your palette knife strokes because you're putting them on thick, you know, like you, you mean something. And it, it, of course, creates some optical illusions. It creates some things, some textures that we'll talk about and light effects here as we get going. But uh, let's just get going. Let's pick up some paint brushes and, and I'll squeeze out of the frame here. If you've got questions or comments, throw them in there. I am looking at the comments. We have a live Q&A at the end where we'll take five or ten minutes and just try to field some questions. But... Right now, I'm just going to talk and paint and, uh, you know, grab a beverage, sit back, enjoy, and let's see what we can do here. All right, I am going to, let's see, I just started kind of goofing around before the camera came on and was blocking in these leaves real, real quick here. And one thing that we can say right off the bat is, you know, you don't have to do your whole painting in impasto thick technique. You can do, in fact, you really do want to have some quiet areas and some thick areas, you know. And so let's just get right into it. I'm going to go right into that flower. I'm going to do, tell you what, there's two ways you can apply the paint, right? As you know, you can, you can use a, a paintbrush or a palette knife. I'm going to do half the flower in a paintbrush and half in a, in a palette knife. I've got a big number 12 um, filbert right here, synthetic silver brush, bristling. And I'm just going to start in on it and get going. I'm not even sure I'm going to use any medium. I mean, really with impasto technique, you don't have to use your your uh, Gamsol or your orderless terpenoid. You can, if you would like, start just kind of using some medium. In fact, I'll, I'll put out some liquid impasto. This is by Windsor & Newton, liquid impasto. And hey, you know, you've heard me talk about this product before. I kind of bounce back between this and Galkid because I like the syrupy feel. This is a, let me just show you real quick. So if you're interested in impasto technique, this is, you might want to buy a tube of this for 13 bucks, but it comes out like that, you know, kind of like a, kind of like a buttery um, toothpaste kind of stuff. Put it right there. In the middle stages of my painting, usually I'll add that, um, but we're not really talking about that. Right now, we're going to add it in right now and just get, just get started with it and see what we can do. I'm going to go, I'm actually going to go with a little, yeah, I'm going to go with a bigger brush. I'll use this number 12. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to dip into some of this liquid impasto, put it right there. And then the sunflower, you know, it's yellow, but, but it's not yellow, right? It's got different colors, values, and temperatures in it. Um, but let, let's mix up. I'll go into, I'll go into some cad yellow medium, a little bit of cad yellow light. My palette's kind of messy. I was just out painting on Monday in the most beautiful place in the world. It was down by a river, 14,000 foot mountain, standing right in front of me, big evergreen trees, forest. In fact, it was a YouTube video, and it's releasing. I should be able to release it this afternoon, so uh, excited about that. New video coming out, teaching tutorial. Anyway, yellow. Uh, let's put a little bit of let's put a little bit of yellow ochre in it, so I won't put all the I won't put all the power punch colors in there quite yet. Heck, we'll put a little bit of green in there, greenish yellow ochre mixture. Okay, a little more cat yellow medium, and uh, again, if you're just joining us. A few minutes late, hello, welcome, say hello in the chat, let me know you're there. Otherwise, if you're on replay, check it out, check the channel out. So uh, with impasto technique, you know, right away, you know, there's no problem with just kind of scooping up a big glob of paint. I mean, that's what it's all about. It's really just kind of, it's really just kind of fun, you know, is what you're doing. <laughs> and I guess go like that, you know, to kind of find, you know, the shape of this, of this sunflower. And, and we can start that way, you know, with this, with this sunflower and just kind of find its basic shape like that, just kind of suggesting a few of the petals, the directional kind of gestures and movements of the petals, however you want to do it, you know, or however you see it. But this is a fake sunflower, in case you were wondering. <laughs> so we're in the middle of winter. 
Um, I did paint some live. If you want to go back and look at the other live shows we had, I did. I think I did do a live show with real sunflowers. Um, now here's the thing. Let's do the middle like a little bit more flat for now. You know what I mean? So, like I said, you don't need to have your whole painting thick as mud. Uh, you don't need to do that. In fact, it's kind of suggested or recommended to have some quiet areas and some noisy areas, some thin areas and some thick areas, warm areas and cool areas. If a painting is all warm, it's not going to work. If it's all cool, it's not going to work. If it's all, you know, you got to have variety is kind of what I'm trying to say here. So I'm going to go into a little alizarin crimson, oh, a little permanent rose, and I had kind of a, a muddy mixture that I had going there. I always keep a mud mixture of my previous colors on my palette from the previous painting. I scrape them aside and put them there for this very purpose in case you just want kind of a, a neutral color, you know, a gray color. But uh, I think it's darker than that. I'm gonna put in some phthalo blue, kind of a powerful, I make my darks not from black, but from, from colors like lizard crimson and phthalo blue, okay? And so I mix with a palette knife just to keep the colors clean. Okay, back into the liquid impasto. Had some yellow in it, but that's okay. Happy accidents are kind of fun, right? So that's all a part of impasto technique as well, is the, the happy accidents. And I want that to be a little more red. I didn't mean to do that. So if you look at the middle of that uh, sunflower, it's kind of a reddish brown color. Kind of more like that, you know. And it's nice to have the dark and light, the warm and the cool next to each other. So you definitely want to pay attention to those opportunities to, you know, to... Uh, create contrast because if you, as you've heard me say before contrast creates interest in a painting you know contrast of color contrast of temperature so I haven't gotten really really thick yet I mean that was to begin with but you know more on impasto technique the origin of impasto it's Italian as you can might imagine and it, it kind of uh, it has the, the words dough and mixture uh, in its in its origins impost imposter means to need you know, to knead dough, I guess, and, or, you know, so, and that's kind of, we're kind of kneading paint, I guess, if you will. So that's kind of where it comes from, but, but oil paint is really the preferred medium for impasto technique. Um, it's, it's slow drying. You can, you can kind of play with it wet and wet and, and get thick and layer as you go throughout a painting. You can still do it with acrylics, um, but I'll talk about that in a second, but with oil, you really don't even need any kind of medium, you, it, it really just kind of depends on, you know, it depends on the manufacturer of the oil paint, right? Some oil paint manufacturers are, uh, are a little more firm and some are not. So I'm just taking some phthalo blue, slightly mixing it into my, my red mixture and just finding some even darker shadow colors right in here in the seeds of this sunflower just to kind of suggest, you know, some form and some shape to that sunflower, right? We're not really, today we're just talking about how you apply paint. I'm not, I'm not necessarily trying to make a, a beautiful masterpiece, but I do want to try to give you some tips and techniques as we go along here. But you know, personally, my, my painting style is to layer up as I go. So I start with, I start by mixing my paints in odorless turpenoid almost in a watercolor fashion, you know, kind of like this stuff up here. And then I get thicker as I go. But uh, again, if you're in the chat, say a quick hello and uh, great to have you. I'm Terry. This is Learning Plain Air Channel. We're all about trying to improve our skills and techniques with plain air painting. Where should we go next? How about, um, how about, yeah, let's, so let's just go a little thicker and a little brighter. Okay. So let's just try to hit the pedals where the light is is coming on i'm just going to go into this is where impasto technique gets really really fun i'm going to switch brushes just have a clean a number eight i got a synthetic brush again silver brush bristling i've mostly used hog hair bristle brushes for most of my painting life however lately i've i've really been digging these uh silver brushes and i did a video um giving my opinion on these the last video i did so check that out if you're interested but, um, what was I going to say? So, yeah, so if you're using impasto technique, you want to have a firmer brush, right? So it's preferred that you have a synthetic brush or a hog's hair. I don't have one sitting here right now. I got to reach over there, but a hog's hair bristle brush because they can handle the weight. They can handle, 
when you go ahead and you do stuff like this and you dip into pure cad yellow light and you just want to kind of go like this you know and like and, and so you need a thick brush to be able to, to kind of negotiate that and to do that you know and so i'll i'll move the camera up in a minute here so you can see but there's some real nice texture going on there and just really getting thick and, and having fun with it, you know? And so you can kind of push the paint in with your brush and just kind of mix it around. You can mix the paint, you know, as you go like that as well. And I can go back and forth between light and shadow. So I can go into my, I can go into yellow ochre. Maybe put that in a bit, bit of my stem, or sorry, my seed, seed color I had. And, and along the edges here where there's shadow, you can kind of just show some shadow coming up into the petals like that, which is kind of fun, which gives it a little bit more of that. Whoa, did you see that big clump of paint fly over there? <laughs> we got paint flying. But what I'm doing here is I'm just, I'm just using impasto technique, but I'm, but I'm showing light and shadow on the sunflower petals themselves you know a little bit of green so let me just get green is a color when you're painting sunflowers you kind of need green so cad yellow medium and then ultramarine blue is kind of a, a nice way to just make a green and then put that into that that mixture so there's a shadow right here if you can see it probably not but sorry i'll move my coffee but there's a shadow of that the seeds this big clump of seeds casts to cast shadow right here on the petals right here. So you got to show that. So I'm just going to do that in real thick, real thick paint like this and just kind of move my brush around and make different textures and movements. And, you know, that word movement, it reminds me um, that, you know, Vincent Van Gogh, when he did Starry Night, you know, that painting Starry Night, right, where he has all the swirly stars. That was new for people to see, right? He did... Uh, he did. He, he presented. He presented movement and emotion to a painting, kind of like one of the first people to do that with thick paint, and he did that in stars. And so, that's another thing that impasto technique does for your painting: is it, it kind of, it, it adds movement and interest and uh, emotion. You know, you always hear me talk about emotion with painting. You know, paint from the heart. Paint with emotion. Um, try to create an emotion, a memory, a mood. You always hear me saying those kinds of things. And, um, you know, there's, there's a reason that I say that, but uh, because it can be an effective way to connect with your viewers, to look at your paintings, and to say something, you know? As artists, that's really what we're trying to do, right? We're really just trying to, we're trying to say something. So these petals down here, I'm gonna add a little more cad, cad yellow. But I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go into impasto, my liquid impasto medium. You don't have to. And I'm gonna do some of these petals right here. You know, like this. Start thick, and then what you can do is turn your brush and just and just kind of make it use the use the end of your brush to show where the tip of the sunflower goes. So so start thick. You know, like right here, and then just turn your brush, and you can kind of go do different little techniques like that. You know. And then, but don't do everything the same, you know, don't knick-knack it, don't, don't detail it to death. Do some strokes that are different, like maybe like this, like that. Different directions, use different directional strokes with your sunflower, because that, that also shows action, you know. And so, um, that's another thing that you can do, you know, like that. And then what we want to do is, let's do this next, on the, kind of watching the time here, but on the, on the outside of the petals, it's catching light here and here. So I could go into cad yellow light, just pure cad yellow light. I'm not mixing with anything. And then right on the ends, nice and thick, I can just go like this. I can just go like that, or just a little bit. See that? And then like that, just thick. And you see how we've presented some light and shadow on these sunflower petals that creates some more interest and nice and thick wise, you know? And then we can do the same, you know, over here where these are catching more light, you know, right here. So we could make that this part of the flower. You know, feel free to just go quick like this and just 
make some make some quick emotional statements about the sunflower, you know, about how you're painting it. And so already you can see we're getting pretty thick there. Um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna dip into titanium white, go into my petal color, add a little more red and green. I'm gonna try to make a brown, a reddish brown color. Right? So I got red and green in there. Need more. Need more of that. A little more red. This is permanent rose. And I'm going to show light on the sunflower right here. Because this isn't all in shadow. You know, there's some light catching like right here. Right there. And then there's some light catching like right there. You know, just kind of show that. Like that. And I'll give you a close up of this. We had some nice happy accidents in those last two strokes. Some different paint mixing in, but that's all a part of impasto, right? With impasto, you're not trying to be completely perfect in between the lines <laughs> kind of painter. Now, look, if you're a realist and this isn't your style, that's okay. Uh, I would I would recommend, you know, um, let's look at this painting right here, okay? Let's just look. I brought a couple paintings up just to kind of show us what I meant by quiet areas. Oh. Quiet areas and noisy areas. Okay, so this is just a little six by eight. Again, one of those 15, 20 minute sketches I do outside my house. And I'll bring it up close. Right in here, it's fairly flat. These evergreen trees are, are not really too considerably thick, you know? But you can see the texture on that, on that side angle of the light strokes on the mountain, you know, where I really try to uh, apply an, an impasto technique right there. You know, a little bit thicker here in these, in these areas right here in the evergreen tree. So I'm just saying you don't have to do that. The sky is flat, completely flat. So it's nice to have, you know, look for opportunities in your painting, you know, to do that. Um, it, it doesn't, I tend to be a thick painter. So most of my painting, you know, it's going to be thick, but especially in Colorado, we have mountains, we have snow. I love to do that in thick paint, you know, but there are, this is kind of quieter down here, you know, this is a plein air piece that I did, 16 by 20. It's quieter here at the base of the mountain, just flat. So that's that's an example of how you could do a pasta technique. You don't have to do it like that. But I'm just saying for those of you that are a little fearful of using a lot of paint or you're not really sure about it, you don't have to do the whole area. I mean, look, let's just take a painting like this. Let's just pretend that I did this whole painting, just flat paint, not real thick. What you could do is... You could just take this tree right here and make it thicker, you know, make it thicker strokes right here and just, just focus on an area, you know, or this tree and, and just, just to show some interest because you want your paintings to be interesting, right? You want the viewer to, to keep looking at it and, and search and, and have their eyes go from, from place to place. And, oh, that's interesting. Oh, look at that. Look how they did that. Oh, that's, you know, so that's, that's another way you can use impasto technique right there. Now, if you're an acrylic painter, um, you just have to, it's, it dries faster, right? So it's a little bit harder to throughout the whole painting session and everything, um, to use that wet and wet, wet on wet technique, but, um, you can use mediums like gel mediums with acrylic paint and still do it. And then look for words like heavy body in the, in the paints or the mediums. I think the mediums are, there's some heavy body mediums like this liquid impasto, but for acrylics. So if you're a watercolor painter, I don't know what to say. If you're a pastel painter, sorry. Um, <laughs> I just, it really is kind of limiting the oils and acrylics, um, unless I'm missing something, but any kind of, any kind of medium that you can layer up. So we'll stop here in a few minutes, but I want to do, you know, I didn't do as much. I didn't do any with the, the palette knife like I thought I would, but, um, let's just go ahead and do a couple strokes of that real quick. And again, if you've got comments, questions, throw them in there. We're going to get to a Q and A here in a little bit few minutes probably so okay I'm taking the palette knife now and then um, I tell you what let me okay I'm gonna show you some close-up strokes let me let me do the palette knife first and then I'll zoom the try to zoom the camera in so you can you can see what we've done what it looks like but um, let's go okay let's just go into I'm just gonna go into cad yellow medium pure like this again get a lot of thick paint on your palette knife now the palette knife is nice because it has that pointed, the pointed end, so you can, you can be a little bit more particular, you know, about it. But see what I did there is I started thin up here, like I used the, the top of the knife. But then when it got down, 
I pushed. I pushed and it made that imprint right there. And I'll show you in a close-up in a second. But that is the really the beautiful thing and the fun of, of painting with a palette knife. Because you can do stuff that you can't do, you know, with a brush. You just, it, it's just, and, and this excitement, this energy, those strokes, I just love, love, love. And uh, I think you'll love it too. So just try it. You know, just get a lot of paint on there. And I can go, I can go over here. I can start up here. So I'm going to start with the side of my knife. And then I'm going to turn it and push down like that. And I can kind of go up and do some different action, action strokes like this and just have some fun, you know, all over the canvas if you want, you know, just like that. And just show some energy like that. So, so that's something that you can do there with, uh, with the palette knife. Now, if I want it in the middle, I could take a big old, I mean, you could get real thick there in the middle too, and just, and just do a big, you know, middle seed in the sunflower with your palette knife too. So that's something else that you could do right there. Um, and then you can go back to your shadow, back to your darks. And then we'll finish like this. Those are in crimson into my phthalo blue, kind of my greenish brownish mixture. My, it's my shadow color, you know, for the sunflower. As you can go back in and you can just kind of show these, even with thick paint, you know, you can do it. And, and just show those shadow areas to give a little more form if you want, you know, to the sun, to the uh, petals. It's kind of what you can do. So back and forth, light and shadow, it's real fun. So there we go. Um, we didn't do anything with the leaves, the stem, you know, no big deal. Um, we're just here to show you kind of about that, but uh, you know, so you can apply these. There's two ways you can do this before I show you a close up. You can, you can do it wet into wet, you know, a la prima. It's kind of how I paint. I, I just layer up and I get thicker and thicker and I just, just like you just saw and throughout the painting. Or you can let it dry, um, like Monet used to do that. She would go back, you know, repeatedly on the same painting, you know, a week later, and he would go over it and show those broken color light effects. You know what broken color light effects are? I've talked about that before. And one layer over another and thick. So that's another way you can do it. So there's two ways that you can do this, this impasto technique. Uh, one is by, by wet into wet a la prima as you go. And then layering up is another way you can do it. So uh, let's see, you know, let's see if we missed anything here. Uh, we talked about how to do it, how to apply it, the brushes, the palette knife. And, and you really do, impasto technique does provide a lot of variety you know, in your painting. It really does. It's really cool. So let me show you some close-ups real quick of this so you can kind of see. And I'm going to, I don't normally move the camera, but I'm going to try it and just see how it goes. So uh, let's just see if I can I'll try not to get you too dizzy with the camera here, but let's, let's just kind of zoom in like, whoa, there we go. So that might give you a little bit of a, sorry for the shaking. I just want you to see close up, you know, how this part was done with the palette knife right here. And don't you just love that excitement? At least I do, the, the edges. And, and that's what Monet and those guys figured out. They figured out that, that when you look at this on a wall, it creates light and shadow in the ridges and the edges. And that's another reason why there's so much kind of emotion and energy and excitement. And uh, we've got these happy accidents. You know, with impasto, you're just, you're going wet into wet, you're layering up, you're getting thicker. So, it's okay to have that because they create nice visual effects. And uh, so there you go. There's, there's a little close up with that. I'm trying not to make you too dizzy here. I'm going to move the, the camera back a little bit and then get myself back in here. But uh, we're going to do, uh, we're going to do a little quick, quick little Q and a, and I don't see too, too many people entering stuff in there, but go ahead and throw a question if you have one, but I have one from one of our viewers, one of our regular guys, uh, TJ had said, um, Oh, shoot, did I grab? His question was, you know, how do you, how do you sign a painting? It's a very relevant question to what we're doing. How do you sign your painting when, when it's too thick? <laughs> you know what I mean? How do you sign your painting when it's too thick? Um, let me just see. I'll give you a couple examples. Okay, so this was fairly thick. Sometimes what you can do is, and you always do want to sign your paintings, by the way. Uh, people want to see that. Viewers want to see that. I, I print sometimes when it's a small, like, 6 by 8 or 8 by 8 
and I don't have a lot of room to, to do cursive and write, write out my name like I usually do, you can print it. So you can just find a, a place. If it's thick paint, you can kind of try to print it. And then um, I will show you, I thought I had a different example. I do back there, but I don't really want to get up and go get it. But um, we'll just use this painting that I had before. But what you can do, see, I just wrote that in cursive, my signature right there, is if it's too thick there, you can just find another spot. Sometimes you can sign it up the side, like that way, um, or just look for a spot where there's some thin paint, you know, and then just do your best, you know. But, but always, even if it's not completely legible, don't, don't worry, but you always want to, with a Sharpie, put the information on the back. You know, I always say like plain air, spring, the, the title, and then, you know, the size, the date, sign it. And so that's, that's the surefire way that people know that you, you did that painting, you know, cause you're going to be famous one day. <laughs> and uh, so you want to, you want to have your signature on there, but I get it. Sometimes the whole painting is so thick that it's hard to sign. You just got to print it. You got to do it your best. You can put your initials um, instead of the full name, but ideally, um, you know, after we're all dead, we want people to, uh, to be able to see our, our full name or however you sign it, just do it consistently so that everybody knows that that's your signature. Here's another pro tip. When you're signing, if you're new to planar painting or new to painting in general and you're signing paintings, whoa, sorry, um, don't sign too close to this edge or this edge at the bottom. I did that when I was new. And what happens is people get a frame and the shadow of the frame or the frame itself covers up your, and then your name's completely gone. People really like to see this on their wall, on their painting, because it's a sign of authenticity and originality. And oftentimes they've made connections with you as an artist, so they want to see your name on there. So uh, there's a little pro tip. Put it somewhere uh, an inch or two inside the borders of your painting. So that was one of the questions we had from TJ. Thanks for that question, buddy. And, uh, and uh, I think... Uh, We'll kind of, unless you have other questions, we'll just leave it there. And I think that uh, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet and plein air painting, you know, is your thing and, and you want to learn it or you're, you're trying to get better at it this year, then hit the subscribe button, check out the other videos. I'll put a couple other videos up here right now so that you can click on and I'll see you over there. So, hey, thanks for joining me. God bless. And uh, hey, let's do it this year. Paint, paint from the heart, paint with passion. And uh, let's really take some steps forward with our plein air paintings this year. All right. Hey, God bless. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time and I'll catch